So thank you very much to everybody who has uh, joined us this, uh, this morning for the service. The service theme is an epiphany leads to new beginnings. Of course, the epiphany has only just uh, happened and this is the first uh, service that we would have um, in order to explore uh, epiphany and epiphanies. So, Thank you very much, Barry, for that opening prelude. So we will start our service by lighting our chalice candle. Now, because of my virtual background, I think that the candle uh, won't be shown, but um, the chalice, sorry, won't be shown. But let's, uh, let's just see. I have faith. And so as we light the chalice, we say the words that will appear on the screen. If I share my screen. We light this candle as a symbol of our faith. By its light, may our vision be illumined. By its warmth, may our fellowship be encouraged. And by its flame, may our yearnings for peace, justice, and the life of the spirit be enkindled. We will now sing Spirit of Life, which will be our opening introit. Spirit of Life Come unto me, sing in my heart all the stirrings of compassion, blow in the wind, rise in the sea, move in the hand, giving 
life the shape of justice roots hold me close wings set me free spirit of life come to me come to We now come to our opening prayer. In this new year, let us be amazed. Let us search for new life and hope in our midst. Let us nurture creativity in every form. Let us be reminded that new insights of the universe are always being made. Let us search for truth and in searching for that truth, open our mind to new ideas and new perspectives. In this new year, let us be amazed. Our opening hymn will be hymn 176 in the Green Book, Come Together. Oh, come together in truth, oh, come together in peace, oh, come together in joy and sharing, come together in knowing and caring. Come together, oh, come together, oh, come together in love. We come together in search of new beginnings for all, where understanding and trust surround us, gone the hate and fear that bound us. Come together, oh, come together, oh, come together. Together in love. I love that uh, hymn. It's very, very good and very apt um, for a starting hymn, I think. So our story for all ages today is called A Baby Was Born by Gwen Matthews. Once upon a time, a baby was born. Even before that baby was born, there were people waiting and wishing and hoping for that baby. The people who were waiting and wishing and hoping for that baby didn't know exactly what that baby would be like. And so they wondered, would the baby have a smile so warm that it could melt the snow and ice? very useful in this time. Would the baby have a voice so strong that it could shake the very mountains? Would the baby be so courageous that all would be comforted even during the most ferocious storms? Would the baby show the world so much love that peace would settle into the most hardened of hearts? But even as they asked those questions, they imagined what the baby might be like. The people who were waiting and wishing and hoping for the baby already believed that the baby would indeed have a warm heart and smile, a strong voice, a courageous spirit and a loving heart. And they weren't wrong. When Jesus was born, his tiny body was wrapped up to keep out the cold. He was laid down on straw. A trough was used to feed the um, in a trough that was used to feed the animals in a barn. His young parents, proud and exhausted, had been forced to take a, a long journey far from home. Jesus's parents were two of the people who'd been waiting and wishing and hoping for him to be born, but there were other people who'd been waiting and wishing and hoping for Jesus to come. These people saw hurt and suffering in the world, and they believed that this new baby, Jesus, could use his voice to spread a message 
of love and of peace. And they knew that it would take courage for him to do so. But Jesus wasn't the only baby that people had waited and wished and hoped for. People also waited and wished and hoped for you. Once upon a time, you were born. But even before you were born, there were people waiting and wishing and hoping for you. But those people who were waiting and wishing and hoping for you didn't know exactly what you would be like. And so they wondered, would you be kind? Would you be brave? Would you show love? Would you spread peace and joy? But even as they asked those questions, as the people who were waiting and wishing and hoping for you, imagined what you might be like, what kind of person you may be growing up to be, they already believed that you would be kind and brave and loving and that you would spread peace and joy in our world. They knew that you could help ease the suffering and hurt in the world and that you would speak out against violence and oppression. And they weren't wrong. We now will say the Lord's Prayer, which will appear on your screen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now have a reading, and this reading is adapted from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 to 19. Mystical, mystical spirit. Your word declares that I must forget the former things and not dwell on the past. So God, I thank you for doing something new in my life and helping me to move forward. Help me to understand that this new way is good and that it is from you. I know that you're making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So God, I will not dwell on my past, but I will focus on fulfilling your plan for my future, together with the collective power of the community. Amen. We now come to our second hymn, which is hymn 125 in the Purple Book. It's one more step along the world I go. Now we have a treat here. Our veritable organist, Barry R. Brown, has put some key changes in there. So don't let them wrong foot you, but enjoy the musical interlude. step along the world I go, one more step along the world I go, from the old things to the new, keep me travelling along with you, and it's from the old I travel to the new, keep me travelling along with you. Round the corners of the world I turn, more and more about the world I learn, all the new things that I see You'll be looking at along with me And it's from the old I travel to the new Keep me travelling along with you As I travel through the bad and good Keep me travelling the way I should Where I see no way to go 
you'll be telling me the way I know, and it's from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. Give me courage when the world is rough. Keep me loving though the world is tough. Leap and sing in all I do. Keep me traveling along with you. And it's from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. You are older than the world can be. You are younger than the life in me. Ever old and ever new. Keep me traveling along with you. And it's from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. I apologize for the ending there. I got carried away. But uh, thank you very much to, to Barry. I do love that uh, that hymn. It's, uh, it instructs us to keep uh, the great spirit along with us on the journey. And the key changes could be implied. It gives you the ups and downs of life. So we uh, come to a time for prayer and reflection. And after um, our period of uh, mu uh, silence, sorry, silent prayer, we will have um, the Morehouse uh, College uh, give us a beautiful rendition of We Shall Overcome, the Pete Seeger classic, um, used throughout the civil rights movement, and it's no more appropriate and poignant now as it was when it was first written. So that will bring us out of the, um, of the silent prayer. For now is the time, my beautiful one. The season has changed. The bondage of your barren winter has ended and the season of hiding is over and gone. The rains have soaked the earth and left it bright with blossoming flowers. The season for, for singing and pruning the vines has arrived. I hear the cooing of doves in our land, filling the air with songs to awaken you and guide you forth. Can you not discern this day of destiny breaking forth around you? The earth, early signs of my purpose and plans are bursting forth. The budding vines of new life are now blooming everywhere. The fragrance of their flowers whispers there is change in the air. For now is the time to arise and come away with me. For you are my dove hidden in the open rock, split open rock. It was I who took you and hid you upon high in the secret stairway of the sky. Let me see your radiant face and hear your sweet voice. How beautiful your eyes of worship and lovely your voice in prayer. Amen.
Absolutely uh, breathtaking, that performance. It's the best performance, in my opinion, of, uh, of that uh, song. So we move on to the address. So in the Christian calendar, we've just had Epiphany. And it might be an idea to explain what Epiphany is, as the variety of different ways it's celebrated um, changes across the world, across the various different churches and chapels. Apologies if you already know. However, please just allow me to indulge for a short period of time. So let's start with the word. It seems like a, a great place to start and what it means. So the Oxford English Dictionary describes it as a usual sudden manifestation or perception of the essential nature or meaning of something. An intuitive grasp of reality through something such as an event, usually simple and striking, or an illuminating discovery, realization or disclosure. We're always having epiphanies. I had one on Tuesday this week. I've never understood why some brands of bread don't go in my toaster. There's always a bit that sticks out at the top until I had this epiphany that if I turned the bread to its side, they would fit into the toaster. Some may say that that's uh, not something you could describe as an, ep an epiphany, but it was something for me. On a more religious note, I also had an epiphany when I discovered the Unitarian faith. Before I was wandering alone as a lonely agnostic, and then as an atheist, angry and argumentative at the world full of its contradictions. But then I discovered my third great grandfather, Eli Whitehead, and our wonderful chapel, the congregation, and indeed the Unitarian faith. And it's no exaggeration to say that that epiphany saved my life. So let us move on to the Christian calendar. So what is epiphany? It's a celebration of the birth of Jesus, the expected savior of mankind, called by many names in the religious text, wonderful, counselor, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And the build up to epiphany or 12th night is the festival marking the coming of the epiphany. The day when this, the nativity story recounts the three wise men visiting the infant Jesus. Different traditions mark the date of the 12th night on either the 5th of January or the 6th of January, but its name is derived from the 12 days of Christmas or Christmas tide. If Christmas day is the first day of the 12, uh, if the if Christmas day is the first of the 12 days, then the 12th night would be on January the 5th, the eve of Epiphany. If it was December the 6th, the day after Christmas, the, it, then the 12th night falls on January the 6th, the evening of Epiphany itself. Whereas Western Christians celebrate Epiphany as the visit of the Magi, for example, Spaniards celebrate this period as Three Kings Day, where children leave their shoes out for the three kings to leave them gifts. Eastern Orthodox Christians celebrate the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River. In the story of all ages, we heard about how all the earth was waiting in anticipation for the birth of Jesus. Everyone who's expecting a baby surely wishes their baby will grow into a kind and compassionate human who will speak out against the injustice, pain and suffering. In the story, we're led to this epiphany, but reminded that every baby offers us the promise of hope and love. Every baby is born with the power to heal, the power to change the world, and we were all once that bundle of joy bringing light into a dark world. To us it may seem insignificant, a baby, tiny and fragile, with no obvious abilities to do anything until they develop and grow. But as I'm delivering this address, there are babies being born every minute. In fact, 385,000 babies are born every day. 
Imagine for a second the collective power of 385,000 epiphanies to their mothers, fathers, uncles, aunts, and all the extended family. And I posit that these babies do indeed change the world just by their act of birth. In this new beginning that the new year and this pandemic has afforded us, I propose that the earth is like a newborn baby. What will this world be like? Will it be kind? Will it be compassionate? Will we look out for each other in this new world? This is all within our control. If we put aside or dispense of money, power, selfishness and division, what are we left with? I believe that we should be left with our values intrinsically imprinted upon us as babies and nurtured later on. I would like our world to be one of kindness and of love. In our first reading from Isaiah, in fact, our only reading, we are being informed that the great spirit instructs us to forget the former things and not to dwell on the past for it is a prison which restricts us. We ask for guidance from God or the great spirit, whatever you refer to that divine entity as, that we may find the strength from within ourselves to see the path of this future, one which we know we have strayed from. It's the path that gives the earth its full equality, peace and love in abundance. But how do we achieve this? To achieve this, I believe we need to reconnect to our inner spirit, the one that was imprinted on us when we were born. The act of listening to somebody else's point of view and trying to understand their position, of practicing, kind, practicing kindness and being less selfish. There are examples in the world of what happens when we fall from this path. The insurrection and violence that happened in the Capitol building in Washington DC was evidence of this, where five people sadly lost their lives. It might seem childlike and idealistic, but that's the point. I truly believe that when we are born, we're the closest to divinity, that we see God in that moment, that first epiphany. And from there, we can deviate away from the path as we become selfish, greedy, and lose sight of what is important. What's the reason for this? Well, the world is full of contradictions. What is a lie to one person is a firmly health truth or belief in another. We seem to have lost the ability to talk and debate politely with others. We live in a polarized society where something is either amazing or vile, where you're either a liberal or a communist or a right-wing fascist dictator, there's no longer a middle ground. Alas, all is not lost. We can connect with the great spirit. We can use all kinds of methods. Meditation is how some people connect to the divine. Some in prayer, others in dreaming, either daydreaming or in their deep sleep. Some find it in the beauty of silence, like the Quakers. Some also find it in nature. And many, very many of us, find it in the laughter or innocence of babies or the face of their beloved. I think that wherever we seek the divine, we should no never stop questing for the truth. To be humble, to know that we may never find the truth, but always, always be open to the epiphanies that are around us, because from this we see the divine, our true path, and the new beginnings that this affords us. Amen. We now have our final hymn, which is hymn 116 in the Green Book, Praise My Soul. my 
my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring, ransom healed, restored, forgiven, evermore his praises sing. Alleluia, alleluia, praise the everlasting King. Praise him for his grace and favor to his people in distress. Praise him just the same as ever, slow to chide and swift to bless. Alleluia, alleluia, glorious in his faithfulness. Father, like he tends and spares us, well our feeble frame he knows. In his hand he gently bears us, rescues us from all our foes. Alleluia, alleluia, widely yet his mercy flows. Angels help us to adore him. Yea, behold him face to face. Sun and moon bow down before him. Dwellers all in time and space. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise with us the God of grace. We now have um, our final blessing, which is taken from Psalm 57. Um, Yes, sorry, Psalm 57. Faithful God, I thank you because you are the God of new beginnings and endings. Father, there are many people today who are suffering from an ending they are experiencing, such as the ending of a loved one's life, a divorce, or the loss of a job. God, please help them to recognize in these very painful moments that they are embarking on a new chapter of their lives. Help them prepare their hearts for the things you are about to bring them out of and the new things you have in store for them. Amen. We will now extinguish the chalice. And as we extinguish the chalice, we say together, though we extinguish the light of the candle, our faith burns on, our vision remains bright, our fellowship warm, and our yearnings for peace, justice, and the life of the spirit constant. So be it until we meet again. We will now join together to sing, go now in peace, our closing Vesper. Go now in peace, go now in peace, may the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Go now in peace, go now in peace, may the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. There's a special day today for one of our members, um, Tony. It's his birthday today.
Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tony. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. We can have um, the postlude if we if, if we want, and, and people can uh, go and make a, a yes, um, we want a brew. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll go through that now. Just give me a second. Thank you very much to Barry, yeah, for playing that. And happy birthday to Tony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I hope you've had a 